Mr. Crispin here today with part four of machining loco cylinders. Uh, today I'm going to start on some of the milling, uh, as you'll see in a moment, so let's make a start. Milling wise, there's quite a bit of work to do, and I'll draw on in pen uh, what's got to happen. Uh, one thing is, I need to mill a fairly big radius all around the bottom here, blending out on the side, uh, so all this has got to go. I got to do the same up at the top end. So that should leave us with the uh, original cylinder block shape I showed, this uh, curve. And then in the back, I've got some pockets to mill. One fairly straightforward pocket at the bottom. and uh, one pocket above it which is a little more complicated similar shape but uh, different depths and you'll see uh, when I come to mill it but I've got two uh, extreme edges of the pocket that go right through and break into this bore uh, and uh, finally a little rib which uh, you'll see when I, when I come to mill it that's the majority of the milling. There's also a series of tapped holes to put in, top and uh, bottom. That's for bolting them onto the uh, main frames. I'm going to make a start by uh, bluing these up and then scribing some lines on to give me a, a bit of guidance when I'm milling it. And I'm going to start with these pockets on the back. Do you think it's ready to use yet, sir? Well, we'll uh, soon find out. It could be, of course, that the uh, coolant washes it straight off, but um, for now, I'll just mark on with a height gauge the uh, rough lines around the outside. I'm hanging off the edge of the surface table here to allow me to mark these positions from the date and faces that I'm going to measure them to. And, uh, in fact, the same date and faces that I used to measure these balls to. I've put the lines on, so uh, let's start milling. I have uh, done number one off camera, and now that I've got my story straight, we'll do uh, number two together. Setup wise, uh, I'm just holding this in a vise. This is actually a grinding vise. Uh, if you're not familiar with a grinding vise, it's one of these where basically you have no lead screw. Instead, you have a little uh, sliding mechanism underneath and uh, just a cap screw to tighten up and that pulls the vice jaw down in this direction so you don't get any lifting of the jaw or cockling of the part and the other thing which deserves a special mention is uh, this vice stop made by Colin Chipet so well done Colin it's excellent uh, and I'm just using that so that I can uh, swap the parts over and then work to the same numbers and end up with the pockets going in on the same position. So to show you um, the work that I need to carry out, you can see there the exhaust ports at the ends and then you can see the pockets with that rib I described and then there's just another uh, material removing pocket uh, lower down. Now these pockets really aren't crucial uh, dimension wise I'm just aiming for them to be symmetrical and the same on both blocks but what I'm going to do is I'm going to rough out the pockets to the lines with a 10mm end mill and then I'm going to put the 6mm cutter back in and work to the same numbers that I used for producing these pockets so we should end up with pretty similar uh, pockets on both
start off I'm going to come in and work on the lower pocket first which is just a stock removal Right, I'm basically just going to keep going around at lowering depths until that's roughed out, so see you when I'm done. And I'm aiming for 400 sow here, so hopefully there'll still be a bit left to come out. What have we got there? Uh, 22 sow left to go. Seeing as uh, I'm only going to rough it with this tool, I'll take 15 thou, or I don't know, 18 thou, then I'll move on to roughing this lot out, and I'll finish this pocket with that 6mm cutter at the same time as I finish this pocket. Now that we're roughed out to the first level down, I'm going to mark on some lines here and here so I know where to stop while I rough the deeper depth out. So to do this all I'm going to do is colour in the bottom, this is only a guide again, purely for roughing out, and then I'm going to take my pair of old digital calipers which I've kept for times such as this, and I'm going to scribe on a couple of lines to work to, so I'm going to mill up leaving a good half a mil each side. On the last roughing pass now, I opt for switching the coolant off when I get really deep down so that I can use the hoover to extract all the swarf when I need to see what's going on. That should be it rough down. Now this is where it starts to get interesting, I've now got to make something reasonable looking and relatively accurate out of all this, so I'm going to switch to the 6mm cutter, uh, primarily because I need a fairly tight corner radius. Um, this is solid carbide which helps and we've got a small uh, 0.8 radius on the ends of the teeth. Um, and basically what I'm going to do is come down 100 sound and trace around the profile. Then down another hundred thou, trace around the profile, clean this up when I get down to it. Then come down another hundred thou, clean up round here, another hundred thou, round here until I reach the bottom, clean the bottom up. Then up and over, down a hundred thou below, trace round, another hundred thou, till I get to the bottom and then we're done. Uh, same applies for here. So how am I actually going to do this? Well, uh, here's a little drawing to help, uh, and this is what I use when I'm actually milling it. And all these numbers refer to the numbers on my hand wheels, so I'll be using the y-axis and the x-axis mainly. Uh, so let's imagine I'm feeding along in y. Now, as I get towards this corner, if you look at the arrow, that's the way we're going. As 38 is beginning to come up on the y hand wheel, uh, I will get ready on the X hand wheel and when I reach 38 I'll quickly change direction and start coming along in X. When the X hand wheel reaches 156 down we come, swap direction and all the way down here when we get near the end look at the hand wheel and when we approach 163 get ready again and then change direction and so on. So I'm going round tracing this profile to the same numbers every time. Now, uh, anyone that's done much milling will know that if I go for this in one, uh, when I come 
particularly into the corners where all this extra meat is if I try and feed in a uh, if I try and feed around like this I'm going to end up with a horrid dwell mark where this is exaggerated where the tool comes in the pressure builds up and it deflects and the machine moves a bit and it digs in around the corner and leaves you the horrid uh, defect uh, as far as I'm aware this is just down to the amount of pressure on the tool so to eliminate these defects I need to reduce the amount of pressure on the tool and uh, to do this I'm going to do this cut in two goes I'm going to go around it first taking nearly all the metal out and it'll produce dwell marks in the corners uh, and then I'm going to do a second cut at the final sizes working to the exact numbers that I've just shown you but this time as it comes round it's only having to take two three thou off so when we come into the corners it should clean the dwell marks out but not leave any more so that really is the crucial bit the finishing cut should be deep enough to take any defects out but not put any defects in of its own so let's make a start and uh, I'm gonna rough out these end ports first and that way as I'm milling gives the coolant somewhere to drain out and I've got a chance of seeing what I'm doing it's a bit in the shadows there but I'm just digging out this last um, yeah, there we are, that's the other exhaust port roughed out, I've done them both now so we can start tracing around the profile next what we're going to do is come up to level with the workpiece and then start coming down in 100 thou increments that's about 2.5 mil And uh, as I mentioned the first time round, I'm going to stay off the numbers, leaving about 3,000 of metal on. Trace number one. So uh, I'll do all this off camera, but I'm just going to come down another hundred sound, and uh, round we go again. See you in a bit. final clean up pass round now I'm at full depth and uh, just tracing the perimeter one last time Uh, that should be that all around the top portion all around the lower two portions all around the exhaust ports on both ends and all around here uh, with the finishing tool and of course I've done all the uh, bottoms of these so uh, I'll take it out give it a deburr and then we'll have a look at it If I'd wanted to put a, uh, a chamfer on these edges I could have actually done that in the uh, milling machine um, but I only want a break edge so uh, needle file and deburring tool seem to be the way to go.
that concludes the milling work on the back so um, I'm going to call it a day here for part 4 in part 5 I'm going to put these tapped holes in and I'm going to go around and mill these curves top and bottom and uh, once I've done all that we'll be pretty pretty near to finishing I have of course got to put the liners in at the top and then I've got to mill a passage going from the bore into this channel to line up with the relevant uh, steam slots so uh, that's coming up in part 5 and probably be part 6 as well so hope you've enjoyed watching and see you on the next video